Hello my fellow degenerates, it's your boy Wallaby coming at you with more horrible content you will regret watching. Today's video, ranking every single catastrophic Christian event that has ever f***ing happened. And for the fortunate group of people who don't know who he is, first of all, wow, f***ing man you. Second of all, TLDR, Christian is an autistic person who has been trolled due to his shitty life decision. Okay, on to the video. Ah, the classic attraction sign. This may represent the love quest as a whole actually, but if anything should represent it, it's this abhorrent abomination of an attraction sign produced by Chris at the start of his so-called love quest, where he intends to find a boyfriend-free girl with the help of this sign due to the infinitely high boyfriend factor. By the way, fun facts of the sign, Numbido Uno, it stated only girls who are smart, handsome, and young may solicit Chris for a date. Which, by the way, Chris is none of them. Numero dos. Chris only allows white women to solicitate, and numero tres, it reads, average to high income, and drives a vehicle. Yeah, this sign is definitely something. Oh no, come on. Okay, let's get this over with. Chris had an obvious fake girlfriend and Chris wanted dopamine receptors to activate. Also known as wanted to have Baba Boy <coughs> with her. So he did anything to accomplish his final goal. The troll made multiple ludicrous requests and by far the most horrific one is this one. Where Chris essentially, well, um, farts on a cake and somewhat shoves it up his ass. So yeah, just plain awfulness. Moving on. Chris Chan and the Hedgehog Boys. These musical legends are masterful creators of certified bangers on my hood's favorite music like So I Need a Cute Girl, Sonnet You Zap, A-U-T-I-S-M, and La Cocina en la Casa de Casanova. Now how could we forget the members of this legendary band? We got Blake Sonnet as a pianist, Shadow the Hedgehog as the drummer, both Sonic and Sonic as guitarists, and the man himself, Chris, as the main lead. Now, fortunately for us, after they disbanded back in 2003, Chris later formed Christian and the Hedgehog Boys' comeback, with its members being Wild Sonic replacing Sonic on the bass and Punchy Sonic replacing Shadow on the drums. Now, according to Sonic lore, the replacements are due to Sonic pursuing his own career in solo country music, while Shadow went into rehab following a cocaine overdose. Jesus Christ. Just for this end part, I'll give it an extra reddit gold. <laughs> Jasper Trusaga is a pretty solid 7.5 out of 10. Now, for the uncultured swines who haven't been obsessed with Chris for the last 5 to 10 years, this saga goes on about Asper Chu, a knockoff of Sonic Chu, which itself is already a knockoff of Sonic and Pikachu. Now, the Asper Chu comics portray both Chris and Sonic Chu as how Chris acts in real life dumb, lazy, and annoying. Traits which Chris doesn't make appear in his comics, where he's portrayed as a Mary Sue who does no wrong and is virtually flawless in every way imaginable. For a newcomer who is hearing this for the first time, it sounds a bit boring, but for all the Christorians out there, this is a pretty solid saga overall. Hey, that's pretty good! Ah, classic Christian Christmas 04. The original which inspired my interest in this sonichu shaped rabbit hole. Truly one of, if not the most representative piece of footage of the Chandler household. Perfectly displaying the dysfunctional family where we can see how absolutely depressed his parents are with what he has become. It starts with Chris being a man-child and doing, well, Chris things. The creatures that were stirring are my family and me and our two cats. We enter Christmas Day in my bedroom of wonder and fun. Because we have plenty of stuff around the house. On this day of 
By the way, he's 24 years old in this clip. We find a Snoopy house. There you go. The main juicy part starts here with the Chandler family gathering around the tree to open the presents and start out with a letter written by Chris, which he gave to his father, where he just rants about his love quest and Santa not bringing him a boyfriend free girl. And we can see that Bob is just completely done with Chris. He has given up on trying to transform Chris into a functional member of society and now just contemplates his existence knowing it's just downhill from there. I honestly just feel bad for him at this point. Now Chris just continues to <clears throat> be Chris. Well, throughout my fantastic uh, love quest, and if Santa doesn't bring me one, no Chris, no Tommy. Like I asked him, then I'm going to need some support finding a fourth fence free. It'll come, Christian. Hope you all like my present. Okay. Today I'm thinking of Christmas and remembering you all. Merry Christmas, Christian C. Yep. Now here he offers his father a present which he can choose between the red pill, the VHS of Fraggle Rock or the blue pill, the DVD version. Which Chris actually wants to keep the DVD version for himself and forces his father to choose the VHS version. Which we can clearly see that Bob doesn't really give a flying f*** about. So you want the VHS? Yeah. Here you go. I'm not much for the other DVD. Why do we have it on both? I gave, him a, choice. I gave him a choice, remember? You remember the original white DVD? Oh. Yeah, it's Frango Rock, Father. That's what's on there. I see. Everything that's on the DVD is on that VHS. Uh, VHS that worked better than my system. Yeah. Anyway, I'll just add that to my collection later. And for his mother, Chris takes great pride in presenting her with the iconic snow globe of Hamtaro. This, this thing is in the box, Mom. I made the box with the, uh, car, with some cardstock paper. Like, it's just why it's hard. Oh. Look at you, Hamtaro. That's cute. Yeah. That's cute. So yeah, pretty depressing out of 10. we finally arrived to the worst piece of Chris-Chan media. And when I say it's the worst, I absolutely mean it. What Chris is currently holding isn't just Fanta, ladies and gentlemen. It's Fanta mixed with Navy. He did this because he claimed that he recycled said sailors. And the human body had a limited amount of them. Not only that, but he also said that it tasted like what he recently ate. And so I grant this event the placement of Deep Depths of Hell. Good on you, Chris. The Axe body spray commercial in Sonichu is definitely something. So basically in chapter 2 of the Sonichu comics, Chris unironically places an advertisement for the deodorant Axe in one of the panels. And for the commoners who don't know the lore behind Axe body spray and Chris, well you guys are in for a treat. Basically, Chris doesn't like bathing at all. So this mofo literally marinates himself in Axe body spray and acts like if it's normal. Not only that, but in the comics he actually advises you to do the same. That replacing having a bath with showering yourself with Axe body spray is perfectly hygienic. To add to that, in the early years of Chris tree, Chris was trolled by being told that Axe is used by gays and attracts gay people. And Chris took that seriously and started ranting on that Axe is for straight people only and that they should stay off our axe, you homos. And in typical Chris fashion, he advised the Forbes 500 company to put labels on their deodorants that claim that axe is exclusively for straight men and not gay people.
The Horde is a staple of the Chandler household, 100% of it being caused by Barbara. In fact, Chris and Bob once attempted to clean up some of the hoarding, and Barbara literally threatened to off herself if they continued, which they obviously stopped to not provoke her. And this isn't the first time she threatens people over her hoarding. Another time she threatened to kick Chris out of the house if he dared to clear out some of the hoarding, once again preventing her hoarded crap from being thrown out in the garbage. Now just to put into context how bad the hoarding situation was, multiple rooms of the house were completely unusable due to the fact that they were packed with useless garbage. And with so much hoarding, it brought in an infestation which was so severe that Chris usually spent his time in his room not to get bitten by the insects. Which by the way are the same ones which covered Bob's body in bug bites before his death. And one last thing, the horde is also the main cause of the 2014 fire, which according to Chris, the fire started because there was a coffee machine situated in the bathroom and its extension cord was worn out, which sparked and started the blaze. The original, the OG, the classic, the photo which represents it all. This is one of the few photos which single-handedly represents the entirety of Christry in a single image. His dazed out look, looking beyond, not being able to fully comprehend what is happening. His classic Ralph Lauren shirt and his Sonic 2 medallion. His messy room with his Legos and posters of Sonic OCs behind him. This photo truly represents it all. Blue Spike is probably the most infamous troll among the classic era Christian trolls. He started out acting as Julie, one of Chris's online fake girlfriends, which Chris, being Chris, obviously believed they were a real girl and not a high-pitched 13 year old. He stated that Julie was from the unknown country named Mulvania, which FYI, it isn't a real country, but Chris nor his father couldn't tell. For the first few months, he didn't do anything too malicious using the persona of Julie. In fact, he actually gained a lot of information for the Christorians. Like, for example, he managed to make Chris upload another house tour and managed to squeeze out a lot of info related to his day to day life. He also managed to make Chris see some of the most abhorrent things with and without context like this, this, and this. The last one is just the best one. One of Chris's longtime online girlfriends, Panda Halo, lives in Australia, and at the time there were some massive bushfires, and Chris being the retard that he is, he automatically assumed that she burned to death. Later grieved about it for a few minutes and then moved on to Julie as his main sweetheart which just completely displays Chris's sociopathic behavior. And after this event, what follows just gets goofier and goofier. Like for example, when Chris receives a letter, obviously written by a 13-year-old blue spike, just that piece of paper is enough proof for him that Julie is indeed real. And after that, on Valentine's Day, Chris uploaded a little big planet level, which was shortly followed by Cybersex, which was interrupted by Bob blasting through the door. The internet. I'm cutting it down right now. No! Dad, no! Yes! No! What are you doing? Here's, here's Robert Franklin Chandler Jr. Fortunately, Chris's parents didn't think that Julie was that true and honest, but Chris was oblivious to his parents' comments like always. Whoa! This is worthless. After that, Chris privately sent the video to Julie, which contained a certain Kimmy, the inflatable assistant, which I just won't be discussing if I ever want to monetize my channel. But you can look it up yourself on the quickie. A set of postcards showing the acts from the previously mentioned video were sent to 14 Brangeland Court, also known as Sonic, Sonic headquarters, headquarters, also known as Chris's house, and Bob got a hold of these postcards, resulting in Chris losing his PlayStation eye. Now here's where Max Milvana enters the picture, who theoretically is Julie's little evil brother who proceeds to mastermind a few malicious schemes. Like for example, he had convinced Chris that he had kidnapped Julie at the miscreant's headquarter in Ohio, and was planning to send her over to China, which led Chris on his adventure to rescue Julie in Ohio. Chris bravely traveled all the way to Ohio in a bid to rescue her and got his parents all worried. Unfortunately, because Chris got the wrong address, he ended up at a rundown house in the ghetto that was inhabited by an elderly black lady. Under the Max persona, Blue Spike, 
hacked into Chris's Yahoo and PlayStation Network accounts, threatening Chris that he would either take Julie away or sell both of the accounts on eBay. He forced Chris into doing various embarrassing acts in order to get the accounts back, raging from raging on video to stating that he is a homo to all of his fans. I'm gay. I'm gay. I'm gay. To declaring Billy Mays as the new mayor of Quickville. And on March 3rd, 2009, on that fateful day, Chris was forced into shoving the pieces of his destroyed Sonichu medallion up his anal cavity before he was able to talk to Julie, at which point Julie admitted both she and Max were the fragments of Blue Spike's imagination. His incident shattered both his heart level and his anus to zero. You are dead! You are dead! <laughs> The That Is My House event is, in my opinion, peak fiction, or well, in this case, peak Christery. This clip takes place in the middle of the classic Chris era, where Chris demands footage of his house to be removed from the internet in a calm and concise manner. Chris took down the video not too long afterwards, only for it to be re-uploaded by Troll Archives. On August 2009, an uncut version of the video, featuring Bob, was acquired by Vivian G and leaked onto YouTube, and it is a masterpiece. This does not even deserve a captain's log introduction. Hey guys, this is dead serious. The inside and outside tour I did a few months ago in my house. Everyone here that my mother and my father are angry at me. They're blaming at me. It's my fault. I admit, it's my fault. I want everything about my house off the internet. I'll send in detectives, I'll send in police, I'll send in everything in my power. Let's get it off the internet. Listen to me. Yes. Listen to me. Yes. Shut that goddamn thing off. I don't care what you do. You get all that stuff off of there. Tonight. I'm working on it. Go work on it. I am working. Do you realize? Do you realize something? Let me tell you. If the health department of Green County sees those videos, that you put on the damn internet, they could condemn our house and we would have to move out of it? I see. So you go get that goddamn stuff off of there and fast. I'm working on it. I was making a YouTube a video for you to tell everybody to get the images off of the internet. It's, oh. it's, it's, it's I my control. Oh, you get them off. It's I my control. I don't know where to go. I don't know you where to go. You loaded them up there. You unload them. I'm working on it. Go do it. I am working. I am doing it. I'm sorry. Get in the hair and do it. I, I, I'll I be up all night with you if I have to. You won't get any sleep for that stuff. Huh? I'm working on it. Get in there and start. I'm working on it. Let me do that stupid video so I can tell everybody in my command to get everything, help me get everything off the air now about our house. I don't want to get kicked out of my house by the health department. And what you just did was stick a knife in our back and kill us. All right, let me just get that stuff off of there. I'm working off of there fast. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. So yeah, please get everything off of the internet now, 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 now! Curse the trolls. Peace to everybody else. Ah, the Mr. Popo costume. So basically, Chris uploaded the video of himself depicting Mr. Popo from the Dragon Ball Z series, stating that the cosplay song was for his girlfriend, Jackie. At first, this seemed like typical Chris move to impress a girl in the possible hopes of getting China. Apparently, either by Jackie urging him to do more or by Chris noticing that his sweetheart found amusement in his costume play, this was only the beginning, because after that cosplay, he cosplayed as Hamburglar, Grimace, Clyde Cash, a member of Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band, a Cherokee, Chris Chan Sonichu, Fred Flintstone and Homer Simpson, Cleveland Brown, a wizard from Hogwarts, and a gangsta. The 
Larm Saga is overall a pretty decent saga, but the most explosive ending by far. It starts off in late 2014, while everyone else was posting political concerns on Facebook, Chris decided that the most important cause of the time was protesting Sega's decision to make Sonic's arms blue, as opposed to the usual tan color in Sonic Boom, their latest non-canon game in the series. Chris was so passionate about this supposed defamation of his favorite video game character that he went so far as to write an incoherent rambling letter to Sega, throw tantrums about it on Facebook, threaten the lives of Sega employees, send shitty glitter bombs to Sega America headquarters, and even physically assault retail staff. His angry incoherent letters to Sega clearly show that Chris's prolonged estrangement from reality could reach new heights, and that concepts such as civility, moderation, and channeling anger in any way that doesn't involve ranting like a child, throwing a tantrum, are by now completely alien concepts to Chris, or at least go out the window whenever he's annoyed. Unfortunately, unlike previous bouts of anger where Chris would fill himself or take to social media to rage at his target, in this instance he decided to take hands-on approach to it by vandalizing copies of Sonic Boom wherever he saw them. When a GameStop employee rightfully tried to make him leave the store, he agreed to walk out but only after brandishing his can of maize and spraying it at one poor employee's shirt. By the way, Chris actually ended up owning a copy of Sonic Boom not too long after these events, which just makes everything much funnier. I think that this saga really showed the world how unstable Chris is as a person and how much he overreacts over the most minute detail, which for me earns its placement in the good tier. Encyclopedia Dramatica, also known as ED, is a satirical wiki dedicated to showcasing what its users deem to be everything wrong with the internet, also known as weirdos or lolcows. ED was a main site which introduced Chris Chan to the world at large in 2007 following 4chan and something's awful discovery of the lolcow, which made him an extremely popular target for trolling. Upon learning of ED, Chris began campaigning for the removal of the article for smearing his name and for particularly took offense to various pieces of fan art depicting Rose Chu a with pickle. a pickle. Naturally, this just led to the trolls adding more content to the page as he shared a series of written and recorded rants about the articles. In complete violation of common sense, Chris added lots of unwanted personal information to their articles on him, including uploading an infamous drawing depicting a sex act between himself and the real life friend. Instead of the information overload overwhelming the admins into taking the page down like Chris believed it would, it gave a substantial amount of ammunition for the organized trolling effort while also destroying the aforementioned friendship. The sheer abundance of shenanigans with Chris eventually led to the creation of the Quickie, since the ED page became too ungodly long and unwieldy for a single article, which has succeeded ED as the best resource for information on Chris's life. Now I could read every single one of Chris's rounds about ED, but after reading every single one of them, I can officially tell you it's not really worth it. But this entire saga as a whole gets it a classic era tier. Not only for being the first instance of Chris acting as Chris, but for also being the first time Chris had ever gotten trolled. Parappa the Rapper is a video game about a rapping dog named Parappa. In 2007, Chris entered a contest called Chop Chop Master Onions Rap Showdown, put on by Sony to promote a new Parappa game. Chris wanted to win the contest in order to take Megan Schroeder to Seattle and finally game some of that desired sweet sweet China. Unfortunately for him, he was cock blocked by Adam Stackhouse's accidental trolling and became very angry. Every single day, stress comes in every way. I ain't got no time for nobody. My style is rich, dope, fat, and witch. We'll make a cake today that looks rich. Crack, crack, crack the egg into the bowl. Crack, crack, crack the egg into the bowl. M I X the flour into the bowl. Which, by the way, in Adam's defense, his video is pretty solid. Note that this was recorded and edited in 2007. Following his loss, Chris proceeded to upload the absolute hard rage, which is CWC is angry, where Chris decided to be a good sport and make a video to congratulate Adam Stackhouse on his victory. In it, Chris is off screen for most 
of it while he uses a Megatron pistol to shoot at and reload at the picture of Adam over and over again. It should be noted that Chris said afterwards that the fan should leave Adam alone and that he was forgiven. So take from that what you will. Here's an extra wholesome bonus fact. Chris and Adam actually met during a convention and actually hugged so that's pretty cool. For me this saga deserves a golden age placement. Good job Adam Stackhouse. Fridays After 5 is a large block RT concert series that takes place in Charlottesville, Virginia from spring until fall. And in June 2010, Chris was recorded there performing this extremely rare activity known as enjoying real life for once. Chris mentioned Fridays After 5 in a video explaining his near hit and run on Michael Snyder. Based upon this knowledge, Chris has attended the event since at least the 4th of June 2010. Chris first alludes to this information of Fridays After 5 in the 2000 video titled Rollin' and Trollin' in which he stands outside the Charlottesville Pavilion which is where Fridays After Five takes place and mentions how Christian and the Hedgehog Boys play there every Friday night. Alright we're coming to you live from Quickville today we're over at the Quickville Pavilion the uh, Hedgehog Boys and uh, Master Christian Mayor he, uh, they, they perform here every Friday night and uh, it draws a crowd it's very good you know this gets me some uh, business. Chris has been spotted a total of three times which are the 18th of June sighting. According to the person who was recording him, Chris wore a t-shirt that says I enjoyed vagina and was wearing a gay circular thing on his hip which is most likely his pokey walker. At some point, Chris pulled back his crude shirt to reveal his flabby triple chinned gut and muscle bra, which he had apparently seen fit to write want woman on with permanent marker. Note the apparent inexplicable absence of the Sonichu medallion. On the 9th of July, the good Samaritan who spotted Chris on the 17th spotted him again. According to the troll, Chris had unscrewed the lens from his DSI and was using it as a rudimentary telescope by pressing it upon his eye. This time, the troll managed to take a picture of Chris who appears to be wearing three pokey walkers of fail, two are red and one is white, and the custom painted one is barely visible underneath his arm. He also has what looks like a small bottle of hand sanitizer tucked into his belt. Chris has been known to immediately follow up any handshake with using hand sanitizer on himself. Chris is also holding a small piece of paper between his legs in both photographs, proving even further that he hasn't learned a single thing in the past 7 years. And the final sighting, the 16th of July sighting, the troll who managed to find him didn't take any photos of him but did write what he saw, and it says, This probably isn't a big surprise to anyone, but Chris was also at Fridays After 5 on July 16th. No pictures I'm afraid. He was wearing a bright orange sleeveless shirt with what looks like a beer logo on the back and holding a Budweiser aluminium bottle, a little mini fan made to look like an iPod and a hula hoop for some <coughs> reason. Most importantly, he had a sort of basic attraction sign with him, nothing elaborate or directly sexual but it said something like friendly and flirty man zone or something similar to that and with more smaller text under that I couldn't make out. He was sitting on the back grass part and left a few minutes before the music was over. I would have loved to catch Chris's attempt at using the hula hoop, I bet that was funny as hell. While the initial footage from June introduced the want woman bra as a sort of makeshift attraction sign, the most recent sighting reports a full-fledged return of an actual attraction sign, although be it a very basic one. The hula hoop is more puzzling. It's entirely possible that Chris brought it to add to the dance moves seen on this very page, but given Chris's abysmally low stamina, laughable physique and total lack of motor skills or dancing ability, Abilities, this seems like a very unusual choice. Another theory is that he used it to mark the boundaries of his friendly and flirty man zone. He can be seen at the end of one of the videos dancing, apparently looking at and drifting towards a girl using two hula hoops near the stage. Whether this inspired him to bring one himself or not is a matter of speculation. Yeah. 
The Man in the Pickle Suit, probably one of classic Ever Chris's most popular arch enemies. The first mention of this character's existence was on the 11th of September 2008 by a troll posing as Blanca. Using a fake MySpace page, they claimed that Blanca was in fact a black transvestite in a pickle costume. This led to Chris believing that the pictured man in the pickle suit was in fact a real person because the persona was entirely fictional. The character quickly became anonymized by the trolls, with multiple people operating under the name at once. Even though Chris turns basically everyone that annoys him into a villain in his comics, the man in the pickle suit has surprisingly been spared. The closest he got to featuring as an enemy was when Clive fought Chris using a pickle gun, which the concept itself of turning someone into a pickle gun is 9 years ahead of its time and it's fucking hilarious. Plus 10 points for the creativity. Chris. Now if we want to pinpoint the exact moment of the creation of the man in the pickle suit, we would need to go back to August 2008 when the troll known as Lord Silly Nipples created a profile posing as Blanca under the name Kawaii Kitsune 123 The troll somehow unsurprisingly tricked Chris into believing he was speaking to the real Blanca, unsolicited nudes of him wearing his mother's bra and underwear. On the 11th of September 2008, the troll revealed himself, leaking Chris nudes onto Encyclopedia Dramatica and taunting Chris by stating that they were a black pickle suited transvestite. While many operated under the name of the Pickle Man, by far the most notorious individual was the Jew in the Pickle Suit, also known as Marvin. Although Marvin has long since stopped operating under the Man in the Pickle Suit name, he is still active on Kiwi Farms and is the current owner of the Quickie. On the 15th of March 2009, Marvin accompanied Robert Simon V to his visit to Christian's church. Four days later, he rescued Emily from a horrific first date with Chris IRL. While Emily and Chris were chatting it up and walking around the mall, Marvin emerged from the shadows dressed in a pickle suit and began flirting with Emily while Chris stood there being cucked live on camera. He ultimately won her over, which come on, that's the most downhill battle possible. You're going against the most riskless person on the planet. He eventually stole her from Chris, who stood dumbfounded, unable to cope with the crippling defeat he had just suffered which would affect his bloodline for centuries to come. In October 2009, the June the Pickle Suit established a YouTube account that suggested he had come out of retirement one last time to deal a final crushing blow upon this man-child. And the Pickle Saga rightfully earns its place in the classic era placement. Well done Pickle Man, well done. <laughs> Liquid Chris, real name Christopher Duckworth, claimed to be the true and honest Christian Western Chandler and the one and only creator of the electric hedgehog Pokemon Sonichu. In reality, he was simply an impersonator on YouTube who initially just made videos to amuse himself and his friends. Liquid was played by his identical twin brothers, Chris and John Duckworth. Chris portrayed Liquid on YouTube and in the PVCC forums, while John portrayed him during the SingStar Challenge. Liquid gets his name from many Metal Gear Solid, a video game which features a storyline of the clone brother of the player character, Solid Snake, hence why Christian Weston Chandler is referred to as Solid Chris in this saga, as he will for the remainder of this video. Eventually, Solid discovered Liquid and he actually believed that he was an imposter trying to take credit for his glorious creation, rather than just being an impersonator. Once he was in Solid's side, Liquid decided to up his game by playing along with his rivalry with Chris Chan, as so did did his fans and became a full-time on-duty troll. At the end of June 2009, a new YouTube account appeared with a simple premise that the real Christian Weston Chandler was back online after a long absence, during which he lost his account to hackers. So all the weirdness on C Chan Sonichu was the work of hacking trolls, and he announced that he was ready to resume posting honest and true content on his new account. This new Christian Weston Chandler posted four more videos much of which were parodies of earlier videos by Solid Chris. Notably, Liquid Chris sported an official Sonichu medallion made out of paper, never Crayola in model magic, a stripped shirt, brown, a pair of rather bulky glasses which would make anyone look extremely ridiculous, obesity by means of a stuffed shirt, a distinctive nasal voice, and most importantly, autism. 
All of which of course made him almost indistinguishable with the naked eye from Solid Chris. Solid himself made no comment, probably because he didn't notice the new videos among the chatter of all the other trolling. What really cranked this up to 11 was a chain of events that started with Solid Chris getting his C Chan Sonic 2 channel back. First, Solid posted a series of videos on the 10th of July 2009 where he called out three trolls by their YouTube handles and dropped their docs, well dropped supposed states of residence, which resulted in the permanent ban hammer to C Chan Sonic 2. The next piece to fall into place was when he posted his rolling and trolling video on his new YouTube account, I Be A Chandler. When it hit Encyclopedia Dramatica, new fags everywhere momentarily lost control of their bowels, thinking that they'd been trolled by a grand master. Trolls, however, did what trolls do best. They started rifing on it. Pretty quickly, YouTube comments popped up referring to Solid as Ian Brandon Anderson, as the initials of the channel. Such was the price of success for Solid's small drop of near win in his sea of epic fail. He had delivered onto his enemies a weapon that they'd used for months. Even the damage control from that episode would have probably kept him from noticing Liquid's videos. Liquid, however, then raised the stakes in an attempt to get Solid's attention. The war began on the 21st of July when Liquid uploaded a video that reeled Solid on the hook, having sold Sonic 2 merchandise with Samantha Thaddeus at Otakon. <sighs> Captain's Log, start date, June 21st, 2009. <sighs> My name is Christian Weston Chandler, and y'all y'all already know me of the cre as the creator of the Sonic 2 franchise and comics, and uh, the uh, the Rose Chew comic uh, as well. Greetings to my fans on YouTube. I am sorrowfully sorry that I haven't posted a video for a while. But uh, I have been very busy making or er, making s rolling in the dollar bills. Uh, I tell you what, and uh, or this uh, past weekend, uh, I went to Otakon, which uh, if y'all if y'all don't know what that if y'all don't know that uh, the Ota convention for some anime and video games and uh, Japanese. Yeah, so anyway, I took my original and official Sancho merch, uh, merchy merchandise, in the shape of Sancho's head. So uh, I actually uh, sold all my merchandise by the afternoon time, and uh, made uh, lots of money. Yeah, uh, here it is, there. A rebuttal was in order. Do not buy from the imposter. He is crappy and his noisel voice is just downright awful. Also, if I wanted to buy paper, I'd go to Walmart and buy 500 full 8.5 by 11 sheets for about $5. His church, he must live in freaking Ohio with Julie. Never drives greater than 7 hours just to even visit Wesley Memorial in Virginia. F him to hell. Solid also took some time out from his busy schedule to post threats on Liquid's YouTube comments. Hey dumbass, you wish you were me. I would say you are stuck in minus second gear. I'm calling you out. 14 Branchland Court, Rockersville, Virginia. Before August 2nd, 2009. If you really want to be me, then come face me. Oh, by the way, your nasal voice is more grating than the video Naive and Metal Nails on the Chalkboard. But Naive is even worse than Nails. You are a nerd and the wimp. Have a good day, Christopher Christian Weston Chandler. Even at this point, Solid Chris still may have to let this all go as he was simultaneously getting blackmailed by Jack Thaddeus who was holding his PlayStation Network account to ransom. That ransom would never get paid and Liquid caught Solid's eye again by picking up on the Ian Brandon Anderson meme. Hello again loyal fans, it is I again, Christian Weston Chandler, not Christopher Christian Weston Chandler as everyone knows. I changed 
agreed to my name from Christopher to Christian. He asked that troll, as some have now informed me, his real name is Ian Brandon Anderson. Anyway, I'm working very hard on Sonic 2 9 and things may be progressing heavily with my new true gal pal Casey and I. Also, expect more announcements from the developing caliber in the future. Stay true, Christian Weston Chandler. For whatever reason, Solid dug up an old video of himself failing at Guitar Hero and dumped it online. shot back with the true and honest rendition on a real guitar. challenge. When Solid Chris attempted to show the world that he was the real Christian Weston Chandler by showing off his crappy Spanish skills, the plan backfired when Liquid responded more fluently in Spanish, French, German and Japanese. Captain's Log, Stardate, May 29th, 2009. I, imposter and Rios de Maron! Yo tenía dos años de español en mi escuela secundaria Manchester High. Call me Senora Bonita. You yo receive me durante los clases. Hola. Este es el verdadero Ricardo Weston Chandler. Impostor en el pequeño chaleco. Yo no solo comprender su último video, pero tiene un excelente dominio de la idioma de Cervantes. Puedo establecer mi identidad hablan muchos idiomas. Je parle aussi francés comme je l'ai pris de ans de français de mes années lycée à Manchester. Have ich zwei jalen von Deutschen und been in der Lage to speak in Fiesten Deutsch. Usana ja Ottoha. Seka puhu asumeha. Asoni wa tadashi kris naraba to yomeru kare daga. Kanomandai wa stubete korera no gengo de orto suru hitsuyo ga arimasu. Alright, Christian, Mr. Brown Striped Imposter, since you have been able to accept and complete my question challenges, it is time to issue a new challenge. Hello, Imposter. I accept your challenge, and I, I hope that uh, you don't back out because I'm gonna give you a real whooping. Yeah, so I can I get a I can't sleep, sweetheart. You know, I gotta get this one, too. I love you, sweetie. And, you know, I gotta be a, 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 I got
You can fly, you can reach the other side of the rainbow. It's alright, take a chance, cause there is no circumstance that you can't handle. When you use your mind, Mr. Bat's got it good, but the same is neighborhood, he's taking over. No, no. From the tire, he can't hide from the power deep inside and make it happen Sonic Boom Sonic Boom Trouble keeps you running faster Sonic Boom As expected, the contest went to Liquid, the absolute chad, and Solid, as always, was a sore loser about it. Liquid had a tally of 4 votes in his favour, 2 against. He then took his leave from the competition after announcing a number of personal coups. That he'd finally found a true sweetheart Casey, that he'd landed a job as a production manager and game designer at Microsoft for Sonic 2 game for all consoles. That Dark Horse Comics would be publishing his Sonic 2 comics, making him even more filthy rich, with the opening of the CWC store. And finally, that he had decided to stop battling the solid and move out of his parents' house to live in Redmond, Seattle to continue his happy, successful life. On the 9th of August 2009, Liquid called Solid up and confronted him over the slanderous lies he was telling on YouTube. Solid tried to reason, and when that failed, he threatened to get Liquid arrested for identity theft, dragging Bob into the debacle along the way. Hello? Hello, Ian. Yeah, I think you know who this is. Uh, look, Christian, stop this. Look, you are giving me a lot of stress right now, and I am not going to handle it. Uh, look, Chris, <laughs> listen, I was kind enough to accept that you defend that you are actually a Christian W. Chandler, but you yes, my name, a my name, my name is Christian Weston Chandler. I find your name is Christian Weston Chandler, but the fact yes. is you're born with that name. You are not the Christian Weston Chandler that was born as Christopher Weston Chandler, who's the original creator of Sonic and Rose Shoe. No, Look, no, I, no. I have no, I, I, I have asked you no, nicely to please stop pretending. For no. the sake of Casey. She really cares about you. I'm not pretending anything, and you need to stop slandering me with your lives onto YouTube. If you don't come, if you, if you do not come clean right now, I am going to get my father in on this murder, and you are going to get fucking arrested, thrown in jail, and you will not get to live the peaceful, happy life of Casey that I would like you to live because Casey really cares for you, man. That's not true. I am on a roll. On the 14th of August 2009, Liquid announced that he was departing from YouTube for the time being to pursue turning his Sonic 2 series into an acclaimed media franchise. Of course, this sent Solid completely over the deep end. First, he raged. Stop that brown stripe in the shirt with the paper medallion. Stop that imposter. Sonic 2 and Rose 2 are mine alone. I am the Christian Weston Chandler, born with the birth name of Christopher, February 24th, 1982. I'm the one with Robert Franklin Chandler Jr. as my father. I'm Barbara Ann Weston Chandler as my mother. 14 Branch Light Court, Rutgersville, Virginia, 229 6834-9900198. Stop that imposter bastard that's been posing with my name, my address, my phone number, everything. Stop him. He deserves nothing. Die, you. Then he tried to reason. The SingStar challenge was never to verify who was the real Christian Weston Chandler. Because everyone on the internet knows that I am. He's the imposter. They should quit encouraging him. And I wish that he would stop his stupid damn dirty game. I don't know what the heck is wrong with his head. He ain't right. He don't even let me get a word in edgewise. He just keeps going on and 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 on. Worse than my father. And as summer disappeared. So too did Liquid Chris, the apparent victim of foul play. Viewer discretion is advised as the next video is extremely disturbing. Captain Slog, Stardate 
August 13th, 2009. Tell them your name. Christian Weston Chandler. <laughs> Are you the real Christian? Yes. No! Yes. No! Yes. <laughs> then why do you dress up like him? <laughs> it's a symbol so we don't have to be afraid of scum like you, Ian. Oh, you do, Christian. You really do. Huh? Yeah. Oh, sh sh you think you've made Quickville a better place? Hmm? Look at me. LOOK AT ME! You see, this is how kicking, this is how kicking me in the balls works out. Hmm. I would, uh, I would tell you right now I was coming for you. And now since I finally have you, I'm gonna give you that piece of my mind I told you about there. Peace, Christian Weston Chandler. Chris's sweetheart Casey was distraught over the event and posted a video confirming Chris's disappearance. Captain's Log, start date October 15th, 2009. <sighs> Hello, my loyal fan base. As a, lot, as a lot has happened to me uh, this past month and a half, I shall tell you first and foremost that uh, I am safe as, and straight. And I would like to note, to a note there, that uh, what what uh, happened, what happened to me there, and uh, why you have not heard from me for so long. Oh, and my and my statue medallion, I do not have it at the moment because it was stolen from me. I was ready for my bus to Redmond, but at just at the uh, bus stop there, all of a sudden I felt someone touching me on my. Yeah, so I turn around because, you know, I am taken by my sweetest KC, and it was none other than the imposter Christian West as Chandler himself, or as he is better known, Ian Brandon Anderson. I called him out and I said, hey you Ian, and I said, Hey, you, Ian Brandon Anderson, he, is, he started screaming and covering his ears, and then he knocked me out with a Sean Lee kick. And so I woke up at a meat in a meat packing factory. I knew it was a meat packing factory because there was, there was a lot of pictures of uh, ducks hanging around. Yeah, he made me uh, get on camera, and then he force-fed me a lot of uh, D-R-U-G-S. I, I didn't even know there were so many kinds of them. I passed out before I could even find them, uh, before I could even tell. And the next thing you know, I, I'm waking up in the middle of the Sahara Desert, and my anus is bleeding. I'm bleeding out of my... Yeah, so... Yeah. So just so just all y'all, so you know by now, that imposter is a homosexual. I had to get an operation. Liquid Chris reappeared on the 15th of October 2009 with a new video explaining the trials and tribulations of the past few months and igniting a heated love triangle with Solid for Casey's affection. According to Liquid, he had been unlawfully detained in a meatpacking factory and when he managed to escape, he found himself in Africa. With the assistance of a few others, Liquid managed to make his triumphant return to Ruckersville and the stage was set from there on out. In the video addressed to Casey's parents, Solid called him the previous Chris. In a desperate video for Casey, Solid called him the other Chris repeatedly. When the dust had settled, Solid's behavior had offended Casey's father and through his immaturity pushed Casey back into the loving, true and honest arms of the Liquid Chris. Liquid Chris is now married to his beloved sweetheart Casey. As the one true and honest creator of Sonichu, his artwork and comics are extremely popular and he often attracts many beautiful boyfriend-free girls with his medallions and 
and his guitar of win. Liquid makes mad cash by selling said medallions at Otacon and other anime conventions while voicing Solid in Sonic 2 the animated series. He has also made several hundred thousand dollars from his two critically acclaimed games Pokemon Lightning version and Sonic 2 the Crystal Chronicles for the Nintendo DS and Xbox 360 respectively. On the 27th of July 2011, Liquid said goodbye to the trolling universe on YouTube by closing his account. After Chris Duckworth abandoned his Liquid Chris persona, he acquired a bachelor's degree in oncology and is currently working as a cancer research doctor. Time will tell if he ever brings us one step closer to the cure. While Chris Duckworth has retired from trolling Solid Chris, he recorded a parody of the theme song to the Cleveland show at some point prior to November 2015 when the video was re-uploaded. The song was eventually animated as the Chris Chan show in November 2020 which attracted the attention of Solid Chris. In the years since, Solid Chris eventually forgot about the Liquid Chris saga. However, in fall 2019, Chris created a Twilight Sparkle secret ship fic folder card of Liquid Chris, showing he still held some animosity towards him. The card describes Liquid as a villain utilizing pretentious acting. What an absolutely legendary ending to a legendary saga, which rightfully so earned its own category well above the rest. Mary Lee Walsh is a former Dean of Student Affairs at Piedmont, Virginia Community College. She thwarted Chris's love quest in its early years by allegedly ripping up his attraction signs and eventually suspending him from PVCC for a whole year. She's one of the most important people in Chris's early life, as she's one of the few people who refused to allow Chris to use his autism as a universal get out of jail card for anything that he wanted and tried to make him act like a normal human being. This of course to Chris meant war. The resulting conflict between Chris and Mary Lee affected Chris so profoundly that she became the sole focus of many early Sonic 2 sub-episodes. Even to this day, she is still arguably the supreme villain and arch enemy in the Sonic 2 series, a status that not even Clyde Cash and Liquid Chris could ever achieve. As such, she is revered and cherished among trolls for her actions both in real life and in the Sonic 2 fanfiction. All hail the Dean. By early 2009, many years after to the college suspension episode, Chris had begun to express a desire for reconciliation with Walsh. He began with the retcon of the fictional Mary Lee's name with a slightly less defamatory Slow Wheel of I Am, which is just Mary Lee Walsh backwards, implying and later stating outright that the character was not related to the real Mary. For several months, Chris made conciliatory gestures including sending a drawing to her house, but her only response was a legal sub. Since then, Chris has accepted that Walsh will never be able to truly earn his forgiveness. Chris continued to feud with Mary Lee Walsh due to the fact that Chris tends to hold severe grudges over seemingly minor incidents. For example, in late 2013, 10 years after the August 2003 incident, Chris blamed Mary Lee Walsh in part for his continued decline in a series of Facebook ramblings and referred to a Walmart manager who banned him from the store as a Mary Lee Walsh witch bitch. Walsh slipped Chris's attention until mid-2019 when she retired, which prompted him to tweet wishing her a peaceful retirement until her time of passing, as well as offering constructive criticism on how she could have better handled her interactions with him. He followed up asking if she had ever made any recorded statement about his apology drawing from 10 years earlier. Two years later, Chris revealed that Walsh's comic counterpart had become the mayor of Quickville, which is either a weird achievement or some kind of eternal torment of sorts. So I crowned the Mary Lee Walsh saga the prestigious award of classic Chris era. She Came For Quick is essentially the 9-11 of Christorians, the shot heard around the globe. This single drawing Chris uploaded to Encyclopedia Dramatica during his campaign against a troll page slandering his name was the final straw that obliterated the barely existent morbidly obese camel's back. Okay, so She Came For Quick.png is a Rule 34 picture that Chris drew as part of a campaign to fight Encyclopedia Dramatica by replacing negativity 
with positivity. It portrays Chris using his hand to stimulate the naked Macon Schroeder's um, lady part to the point where, how do I say this for the fellow kids in the audience? Well, to the point where she Fortnite Battle Royale W's. This is indicated by the fucking weird squiggly shit lines. While Chris gives a benevolent smiling thumbs up. Arguably the most scandalous of all of Chris's autistic art. This single image managed to invoke so much drama. It was the straw that permanently destroyed the already dying friendship between Chris and Megan, and the consequences of uploading it online have continued to face him for years afterwards. In fact, it's entirely conceivable that the targeted effort to troll Chris may have simply faded away had he not edited the page repeatedly and uploaded this image to Encyclopedia Dramatica. Doing so demonstrated how easy it was to manipulate Chris and and as such put blood in the water for trolls for years to come. At first people believe that the picture to be of his imaginary twin sister Crystal, which in retrospective that is some legendary tier foreshadowing, which was not helped by the initial caption that Chris provided. In order to defend his fictional sister's honor, Chris edited the article to confirm that it was in fact Megan Schroeder. He also angrily decried the scurrilous rumors in the Mad Men Rising video shouting that it was Megan defeating the purpose of centering her eyes to hide her identity. While this is less disturbing than Chris wanting to have an incestuous relationship with his own fictitious twin sister, it is notably creepy that it is of his only friend with whom he had no romantic or sexual relationship, no matter how much he tried anyways. Megan was understandably disturbed when she figured out the truth behind the image, which she figured out on her own. As it stands, she had made it perfectly clear to Chris that she had no romantic feelings for him and that she wanted to remain just friends. In the aftermath, Math, she was so disgusted that she severed ties with Chris. Since the release of that picture, Chris has flip-flopped from taking responsibility for making the image to blaming the trolls and even blaming Megan herself. Or some combination of the three things, which from my point of view this is just some god tier copium from Chris's part. Over 13 years later, history would repeat itself when Chris revealed to few people in private that he started performing certain activities mirroring she came for quick but with her own mother, among other depraved acts. After he was pressed for details about the mysterious identity of an actual boyfriend free girl that he met in real life. Now I genuinely don't know where to place this, either deep depths of hell because this is some absolutely horrific depraved Chris sex fantasy or golden age because this kind of molded and shows the world who Chris is and what he actually thinks of women and what he intends to do at the end of his so called love quest. So I'll link a community poll to let you guys decide the fate of she came for quick. Michael John Mike Snyder, or in Hebrew whatever this means, is one of Chris's many enemies. He was the manager of the game place, later known as Charlottesville Hobbies, Games and Toys, a game and hobby store place that was in Charlottesville. Chris regularly caused trouble at the game place and was eventually permanently banned in June 2008. Based on his surname, Chris came to the incorrect conclusion that Snyder was Jewish. In actuality, Snyder is an Americanized version of either the Dutch surname Snidger, the German surname Schneider or the Slavic surname what the fuck this even means. All of which translates to Taylor in their respective languages. Due to his misguided belief that he had genuine friends at the game place, Chris developed a burning hatred for Snyder over the years, describing him as a bastard, a jerk, a pighead stubborn Jew, cold hearted and mean, a son of a bitch and a children fucking damn. In June 2010, Chris had a run in with Snyder when he tried to take his picture at the game place and on the 28th of October, 2011, both Barb and Chris committed more serious attacks on him for which they were both convicted. Legal punishment as well as the store's eventual closure have done nothing to check Chris's rage. Despite being a major antagonist in Chris's eyes, Snyder was spared from being adapted into the Sonic 2 counterpart villain. This might have been because he didn't threaten the love quest or more likely Sonic 2 went on a hiatus sometime before Chris began developing further hatred towards the store manager. I'll place Michael Snyder in the golden age simply for being such a cornerstone of Chris's early life and I respect the man's determination to not allow a fat autistic man-child in his store. Like for real, listen to this video where Chris begs for Michael's forgiveness, meanwhile Michael just stands his ground like the king he is. Hello Michael, I see uh, you've been lo you see you're looking well, can't change much since for the past almost two years and yeah it has been uh, almost two years since uh, what happened uh, June, June 2008. But uh, I came back hoping that uh, we could put that behind us and uh, come on. I mean, 
it has been almost two years, and this has been on my mind for so long. Yeah, just you know. Look, can't we just forgive or forget? Come on, I have this weight on my back. No. And I have really missed no. coming here. No. I'm you need to leave. I'm a better person. You need to leave. Now. <sighs> come on, well, come on, dude. No. You need to leave now. How can you be so heartless? I mean, you're, I mean, you're obviously not as mean as one of those trolls I've been dealing with. You need to leave. Now. Mm. I mean, come on. I mean, obviously you had something against me. It's not in the Wii instead. I just would like to know what. Come on. Give me a break. Alright, fine, I'll leave. But I hope that God will forgive you for being so heartless and cruel, Michael Snyder. Thank you. This image refers to a certain part of when Julie revealed herself to Chris to be nothing less than a 13 year old gremlin. Julie Reveals Herself is a mumble chat that occurred on the 3rd of March 2009 and is easily one of the most infamous events of trolling in Chris Tree. In this chat, Chris is basically locked up in an hour long torture session with Blue Spike, who poses as Julie's fake brother, Max. After being deceived by him earlier in the day, Chris crosses paths with him one last time later that night. Max continued his onslaught on the man-child. He threatened to sell Chris's PlayStation Network account on eBay several times, going so far to even allow the proceeds to go directly to 4chan as well as Encyclopedia Dramatica. He also threatens to send Julie back to Europe, force Chris to declare Billy Mays as a new mayor of Quickville, and have Chris imprisoned. But the icing on the cake was when Max made Chris cut up his precious medallion and shove it way up his ass. After all was said and done, Max kept true to his promise and let Julie talk to Chris. Little did Chris know that Julie had a little surprise for him. Okay, I'm pretty sure we all know where this goes with no question. The medallions, also called medals by Chris, were a result of Chris's infatuation with his original character Sonichu. Due to the frequency of wearing his medallions in videos, photos and in public, it has become one of Chris's more memorable characteristics along with his trademark striped shirt. Although Chris's habit of wearing the medallion has fluctuated over the years, he still wears the medallion in public. He does not plan to retire it despite its degrading condition. In 2016, Chris made a custom doll figure of himself based off a My Little Pony Pony toy. He has been seen holding it up in videos and taking it out in public, visible from his purse, which suggests that the doll is a new spin on the medallion concept. More recently, Chris has often been seen wearing the medallion alongside his unicorn cosplay and Z-Ring. Most notably, in a photo of him at Quickville Pride, published in the local newspaper Daily Progress in September 2017. Over the years, Chris has produced numerous medallions of his electric hedgehog Pokemon characters and previously produced them in larger numbers for purchases through eBay. All previous and current iterations have been made from Crayola model magic and acrylic paint, and their quality varies from medallion to medallion. All different variations of the medallion include Rose Chew Medallion, Blake Sonic Chew Medallion, Jigliami Medallion, Asper Chew Medallion, Snoop Dogg Medallion, Night V Medallion, Modified Medallion, Shrek Medallion, and Golden Medallion. The Dimensional Merge is a supposed apocalyptic event in which Chris believes that Dimension 1218, which according to Chris, 1218 was inhabited by fantastical denizens alongside humans and animals, but was divided into other universes by the wizard Merlin during the reign of King Arthur in the 14th century. This is Chris's way of explaining why mythical creatures do not exist with us today. And Dimension C197, which is the primary dimension of Chris's fantasy. The name is based off the fictional Dimension C137 from Rick and Morty. It includes Quickville and all other creations Chris has produced over the years, as well as various creations by other companies and people such as Transformers, MLP, and all manner of Sonichu OCs. The geography of this dimension is dubious at best, with Quickville itself behaving much like Springfield from The Simpsons, expanding and contracting whenever it's necessary. Of course, the merge is just an escapist fantasy and coping mechanism for Chris. Originally part of the lore the idea guys had brainwashed into Chris, the dimensional merge is 
Chris's latest means of avoiding reality, believing it will rescue him from his self-inflicted real-life problems and enable him to continue living like a man-child. First announced in October 2018, the merge was expected to take place by the end of the year. That deadline and several others have passed without incident. But Chris has remained persistent in the years since. Indulging this belief has become the default latch-on point for would-be trolls. It is also said that the financial crisis also helped Chris go off the deep end, because he believes that he is wealthy in Quickville, and that when the dimensional merge finally happens, he will have access to his money there and will be able to pay off his current real-world debts. He has asked to borrow money from people, claiming he will pay back 10 times the amount once the merge concludes, not realizing he sounds like more of an autistic version of the Nigerian print scam. On the 8th of October, Chris tweeted, Sometimes I just want to give up, but my loved ones won't let me. If people could help us here, in this world, monetarily, we would be okay. I promise all of you that when the day comes, I will reimburse you personally in the nation of Quickville. He followed this tweet up on the 23rd of October with, When the world merges, I will have access to tons of savings in Quickville. It is a lot of money indeed. It is a 10 to 1 in my repayment rate. And with all of that said, I think it deserves rightfully so a good placement. The end of Chris's decade-long love quest happened during the Idea Guy saga, where Chris's belief in multiple dimensions was exploited and his sense of reality hijacked to make changes to many of Chris's characters, concepts and perspectives of the real world. Within considering them to be valid, ideas involving the love quest include Chris being brainwashed into thinking of himself as a bisexual and Chris believing he's in a polyamorous marriage with his imaginary friends. Beginning in March 2018, Chris is already weak grasped on reality, having been eroded further under the Idea Guy's influence, he believed himself to be in a polyamorous marriage with Mewtwo, Magic Chan, Grizel Rose Chu, and Silvana. By April 2018, the Idea Guys had manipulated Chris into believing that he was bisexual. In April, Chris recorded Dick Licker That Is I, a video of him giving his imaginary husband Magic Chan a blowjob. Two weeks later, Chris flirted with Brian Frogboy over the internet. He also began to kiss men on the cheek in public, including several fans and attendees at the Too Many Games convention, which led to his ass getting kicked out. Chris's belief in the polyamorous marriage was so strong that he told Whiskers, a female fan cosplaying as him, that he wasn't interested in dating her. And in July 2018, he also rebuffed a professed potential sweetheart, Miss Cherry, showing no further interest in finding real-life China for himself, only fictional one permitted now on. The love quest has come, if not to an underwhelming yet bizarre conclusion, at least to a long interlude not quite like anything before it in Christry. It seems that in a sense the real love quest were the severely brain damaged friends that Chris made along the way, quite literally. That being said, even in this state Chris occasionally indicates his disappointment in not finding a romantic partner that actually, you know, exists. In one such post, he once again blames the trolls for his inability to find a woman instead of making an effort to reach out to someone offline that doesn't involve waving a sign around or loitering on private property. With that post, Chris projected that he had a good Valentine's Day and that all trolls were miserable when in actuality he spent it holed up in his house with his mother and pets, probably still depressed about his lot in life. Additionally, while speaking with Kawaii Sandbag, Chris indicated that he was still lonely and had considered one of the members of the Praetors for a potential relationship, but put it off under the belief that Magic Chan would soon cross into 1218. It remains to be seen whether whether Chris will consider revamping his love quest again, or if he will continue to hold out for Magic Chan. The true end of this saga was made clear near the end of June, the boyfriend free girl he had searched for all these years had been hiding under his nose, and a pile of garbage this whole time. Unfortunately, this end was not what we all pictured, and the falling actions of this story likely involve him relieving the hour of Julie reveals herself day after day in prison, because we, the people of 1218, would never let them be together. I'm going to place this in the bad tier due to it just being sad and effed up how Chris for the most part of his life post 2018 gave up on dating real life people and would quite literally date his hallucinations and delusions. 
The Relics of Fail, also known as Christorical Artifacts, are several items that Chris places significant emotional value on. Most of the fates of these relics are unknown following the 2014 house fire and the aftermath of the Jail Saga. But several relics, including the Sonic Totem, the Megatron Pistol, and the Crumple Lobe are confirmed to have survived, with others likely to have escaped serious damage as well. The most important and influential relics would be the classic, Chris's famous blue, white, and red rugby t-shirt. Formerly thought to have been destroyed during the house fire of 2014, Chris later rediscovered it in a damp and grimy bag of clothes, and put it up for sale on eBay after restoring it by cleaning it up and poorly patching it. It was badly damaged and beyond repair and was later presumably thrown out by Barb. Quick on TV, a DVD composed of many home videos among other things, such as his song of Christian. Guitar, apparently convinced that counts as a real guitar, Chris is often seen with his beloved Guitar Hero controller in attempts to look cool. It invariably has the opposite effect. Pedo glasses. Have you ever noticed how most pedophiles in composite sketches with these kind of glasses? Yeah, don't think about it too hard. Sonchu. Chris's beaten old station wagon. It has been replaced four times over the years. Also appears in the comics as one of the samurai pizza bots. Sailor Moon poster. Chris used this poster to keep himself straight. Lil Chris. A stuffed bear created at the Creator Critter Workshop. Clown doll. A harmless looking clown doll, significant that it is often bears the brunt of Chris's fury in his many rage videos. Its hat was bitten off by him at one point. Fab Cup, a plastic cup used by Chris to collect his semen for recycling. Megatron Pistol, a toy handgun Chris uses to threaten his most hated foes. Plush Breasts, a pair of fake breasts often seen in his videos, possibly used as a sign of heterosexual virility and as a mass debating tool. Sex Toys, lots and lots of sex toys, including sex dolls, a vibrator, a dildo, a penis pump, a strap from the dildo, anal beads, penis rings, and two flashlights. Autism papers, presumably papers detailing Chris's exact psychological diagnosis, while a psychiatric survey from 2004 has been procured. The original papers documenting Chris's diagnosis are currently locked away in a filing cabinet in Bob's Autism room. Papers. The papers are currently presumed missing after Bob's death and the house fire of 2014. Transcripts and report cards. Chris's transcripts and report cards to verify whether if he was indeed an honor roll and what degree his claims about his high school grades are true. Attraction sign, a relic of days past when Chris had not yet been told by his mother that soliciting using a sign made him look retarded. The most recent sight of this to date was at Fridays after 5. Hard Torch. An odd-looking creation, though more original than most of his works, born of pixel blocks that is used in the comics to summon his twin sister, Crystal. Medallions. Hunks of Crayola brand modeling clay fashioned into the shape of Sonichu's head, among other characters' heads. Once believed by trolls to be the source of his power, though they were swiftly corrected when Chris began showing off the Amnes Festi ring to show that his videos are true and honest. Chris eventually began production, selling new medallions on eBay in 2014. Letters to sweethearts. Condoms. Never used correctly, Chris once used one that Mia Ham purchased. Receipts from Ohio trip. Chris bought some burgers, obviously no pickles, from Sonic on the way to Cleveland. Amnes Festi Ring. Since the Sonic 2 medallions were stolen, Chris has claimed this mysteriously named high school ring is the true source of his power. He has since put the ring up on eBay, claiming his true source of power is within himself. Sonic 2 Medallion. A medallion Chris crafted himself from Crayola model magic which used to store his power to transform into Chris Chan Sonichu, before it was revealed that it was actually the above ring. Anime Wings, a pair of women's hair clips that Chris got at Anime Mid-Atlantic. For some reason, Chris felt the need to incorporate them into his comic. Belt Buckle, not a very well-known relic, but nonetheless extremely amusing. Magic Stones, Chris owns some quartz crystals which he can store energy in and get more energy out from. Sonichu Shoes, Chris shoes that are painted with Sonichu colors. Jacob saw Darkness purchased the first pair when they were worn out. PS3, Chris's life upgrade, and arguably one of the biggest drains on his monthly tugboat. He went through two PS3s. PlayStation Eye, the window through which trolls can catch glimpses of Chris on his day-to-day -day life. Apple products. Chris likes Apple and owns a lot of their products, including, as of 2018, two iPhones, one public and one private. PSP, yet another drain on Chris's tugboat, his in typical fashion, decorated it with images of his flagship character and his own face. Homemade CDs. Chris has made a life out of burning homemade CDs with his own crappy artwork on it. The most notable 
Bowl 1s are Christian's favorite hits, which saw the birth of everybody's favorite electric hedgehog Pokemon, Sonichu and Three Quarter Woman, a CD supposedly made for his sweetheart Catherine, but in reality was all about himself. Track lists due to Chris's other homemade CDs. Of Chris's CDs, the only ones whose tracklist information is publicly available are Christian's favorite hits and Three Quarter Woman. Some of these CDs could contain very interesting information including Song Between Friends, a CD for Christian and Sarah. Like other CDs, virtually nothing is known about this disc and its track list. Its existence and the date in which it was made are attested solely by a drawing from Chris's scrapbook. Pokewalker, a Pokeball shaped pedometer originally packed with the Pokemon Heart, Gold and Soul Silver versions, recolored in the image of one of the seven Sonatu balls. Wiimote, like the PSP and Guitar Hero controller, this poor Wiimote has been decked out in Sonatu colors and was used in Chris's attempts to get Miyamoto to make him a video game. PlayStation 4, Chris's current main gaming console and is also used to make the majority of his videos. Nintendo Switch, Nintendo's latest gaming console and given to Chris by an enablers. Xbox One. Fitbit, a gadget to help Chris get healthier. Gaming Laptop, a laptop that Half-Life 2 has probably still not been played on. DSi and 3DS, a Nintendo handheld console that Chris has used for Flipnote Hatina in the past. Commodore 64, a very old gaming console that Chris believes he is the goddess equivalent due to the EDI guy's influence. Scrapbook, a three ring binder containing all of Chris's comic pages and other drawings. The Crumple Lope, an envelope residing in the scrapbook of Fail that stored torn up remains of Chris's most regretted drawing. Even after the 14 branch line court fire, it still happened to be intact. Oversized drinking straw, even the simple task of drawing a straight line to the picture to drinking straw evades Chris. Original hand-drawn copies of Sonic 2 that are superior to all forms of digital artwork since they don't have the original pencil markings. Nobody can copy Chris's hand-drawn style no matter how hard you try. Sonic Totem. A demonic looking paper mache Sonic that Chris made and appears in a few videos. It has since been sold for $1,500 on eBay. Hand-drawn Nintendo Power issue. A lengthy home issue of Nintendo Power crafted to show Sonic ditching Sega to join Nintendo Nintendo and revealing a little bit of what Chris wants in Sonic 2 games. Lego figures. Chris has created Lego minifigures which are made to look like the people in his life and his original characters. Manchester High Lego Building. Chris spent many hours creating his high school out of Lego which is estimated to have cost him a thousand dollars if all of the Lego sets were purchased at retail price. Amiibo of Quickville characters. Chris has modified Amiibo figures of characters from Nintendo games to look like his original characters. Voodoo Tor Torture Chamber. Chris used black magic to curse some of the people he didn't like by putting voodoo like effigies in a chamber. Holy labels. So the labels blessed by Chris and sent to someone who wrote him letters in jail. Samples of Chris's semen. A video that was uploaded on the 26th of February 2016 reveals that Chris has been saving samples of his semen and storing them in his home's fridge. In the video Chris shows two samples, one that was produced recently and another one from the 18th of May 2015. Muscle bra. A brother Chris wears to keep his man boobs in check. He believes that everyone will be turned gay if they don't wear one too. Unicorn cosplay. A set of unicorn ears, a horn and a tail that Chris got at Bronicon 2017. Chris has since worn these accessories outdoors and even to church where he was asked to remove it. Hillary Clinton woman card. A card Chris uses to prove that he is in fact a woman. And last, but probably one of the most infamous relics, the pepper spray. A weapon of self-defense that Chris has used illegally in the past. Hexbox, Hexbox, my beloved, you've may have been loved by an entire generation, but that has done nothing to stop Chris's hatred for this patriotic, freedom-inducing American-made console. You can spot some early signs of hatred in the Animal Crossing documentary in which he makes the following remark. Xbox and PlayStation 2, my opinion is the same as yours, they both stink. Which just shows Chris's absolute brand loyalty to Nintendo, which only got worse with time. He then makes another remark, 
stating the fact that he doesn't own either console. Notably, Chris's vitriol also extends to PlayStation, since he was still purely a Nintendo fanboy and meat writer at the time. Chris tried to sell the Xbox games Call of Duty 2, Big Red One, The Chronicles of Riddick, Escape from Butcher Bay, Driver and Celebrity Deathmatch on eBay, which makes it possible that Chris once owned an original Xbox, though it has been known that he tends to buy games at thrift stores and sell them for a profit. He was asked about his hatred towards the Xbox in his mailbag and he answered pretty much the same as all other responses. I never cared for the Xbox and frankly it lacks heavily in comparison to the Wii and PlayStation 3. Plus you have to pay their fees to even go online or download demos with it. The Wii and PlayStation networks are free, only costing if you buy the downloadable games. When Microsoft finally get that costly detail long gone, I may reconsider. But in the meantime, I rest my case. Actually, Xbox Live has two kinds of accounts. Free accounts can access a large part of the Xbox Live features, such as friend lists, messaging, achievements, and the content marketplace. Gold accounts, currently priced at around $60 a year, can play multiplayer games, use certain premium features, such as Netflix, and get weekly discounts in addition to early access to certain downloadable games and demos. Considering $60 is around the price of a single game while factoring in Chris's monthly allowance and his habit of purchasing video games and gadgets on a whim while accruing thousands of dollars in debt, the price would hardly be a problem for him. It is safe to say Chris's opposition to Xbox Live stems purely from his console war bootlegger mindset. While PlayStation Network lets users play multiple games for free, a premium version called PlayStation Plus was introduced in June 2010. In order to prove how strongly he despises Xbox Live Gold, Chris was spotted in April 2011 using the Plus services. However, the PlayStation 4, the console Chris shelled out for money, requires mandatory PlayStation Plus to play on Live, which is at least $60 for 12 months. Despite being the same price as the Xbox Live, Xbox Live hasn't had as many online shutdowns as PlayStation Plus it has better security. Now, Chris's hatred for the console transcends reality itself and continues in his Sonic 2 comics. For example, the Xbox 360 is featured during the elevator gag portion of Sonic 2 issue 8. Sonic 2 and Rose 2 are greeted by a depiction of an axe cutting through the console as they travel past the 70th floor of the 4 Transcend garbage building. The 71st floor displays a PlayStation Trophy Award for killing that Xbox. Christian took care to draw a damn red ring around the Xbox power button, in reference to its infamous red ring of death. In Sonic 2 issue 8, Jason Kendrick Howell is shown serving his evil realm using an Xbox 360 and a pirated copy of Little Big Planet. Later, Chris portrays Alec Benson Leary as the owner of an Xbox 360, though as an actual computer hard drive. Chris as Colossal Chan enters it, deletes everything about the Asperpedia, and then proceeds to destroy the Xbox. In issue 12, a fully found myself Xbox trophy is depicted for Reldenac, whereas comic Chris's achievement is depicted with a PlayStation 4 trophy. Chris also has no idea what a real Xbox 360 is supposed to look like, most notably he thinks the console is smaller than a Wii and with the power button on the top end of the console rather than on the bottom end. He also appears to think that an Xbox 360 has four unprotected USB sockets directly under the disc tray. As his portrayal of Alex's console shows, a real 360 console has two memory card slots at that location, and the USB sockets are located next to the power button under a door. However, the new model of 360s don't have memory card slots, but do have two USB slots behind a door near the power button. Now, even after several years have passed since all the major trolling, Chris still hates the Xbox because on the weekend of 7th of November 2013, Chris was banned from Rockersville Walmart after he vandalized an Xbox One kiosk with a felt tip marker to read Xbox One. He tried writing the manager an apology letter to get his ban lifted to no avail. On his Facebook page, Chris posted that the last name of the manager was Oot. He also went as far as to actually post this on Human Rights Campaign's page and claimed he has been discriminated against for being autistic and a lesbian, even though it's pretty clear that the moral of the story is not to vandalize store property. He asked the community to demand Walmart to unban him, even posting his address and 
phone number under the pretense people would actually follow through with his orders and liked his own post. He did at least admit that what he did was wrong, so maybe there is some silver lining. Chris posted this text on the 4th of September 2014, which oh lord, I'm not gonna make you read all that text. So TLDR, Chris whines about being banned from said store due to literally vandalizing all of their consoles and later proceeds to blame everything on the store manager, hating on Chris because he is autistic, lesbian and a transgender. Overall, a pretty funny part of Chris tree, which shows off Chris's contradictory lies and how much of a corporate bootlicker he can be at times. Good tier it goes. Sanchu was the name Chris gave to his car. Chris has driven several cars over the years, all bearing vanity plates simply reading Sonichu. Now the backstory behind said plates is that since Chris is a huge fan of Transformers, he pretends that his car is a Transformer named Sanchu, proud Autobot leader of the Quickville Virginia Autobot squad. He is also my cool sport in escorting car. From his original Wikipedia, it says, My car is a quick-footed, well-armed 94 Escort. His name is Sanchu, dark blue as V. Vehicle. He holds battery blue yellow combination colors and strong personality under his hood. He has his plasma pistol, energon sword and roof shield and when Decepticons attack he is the first to show up to the party and leading the quickful Autobot defense squad. When I'm not in the driver's seat and he has to make his way to the fight he projects my image in the driver's seat for the sake of his disguise. Transformation details. His roof comes off his vehicle mode to make his shield. His hood pops off to transform into his plasma pistol energon on sword. Stay tuned to watch his transformation in a few days. The reason why the car is named Sanchu remains unknown. It could be a reference to Full Tilt and or Wipe Out, both Transformers with hypernated names that turn into cars. There have been multiple Sanchu iterations, the first of which was a Ford Escort. It was a second generation Ford Escort LX. It was the former car of and the hand-me-down from his mother Borb. Members of the PVCC believe that the fact that Chris drove a Ford Escort may be a universal symbol of romantic fail. Chris did not save up his tugboat for a vehicle, deciding he had more important things to spend his money on, despite the fact that sometimes a nice car can lead to getting China to screw. Unsurprisingly, Chris's mother paid for his gas. The next iteration was a Cadillac Seville. According to a Facebook status from February 2012, Chris no longer owned or at least no longer drove the previous Sanchu. Why Chris bought another car and escorted Sonichu's fate is unclear. Clear. However, said Facebook status suggests that he may have bought another car to avoid detection by jerk -ops. Considering how many miles the Escort had on it and how poorly Chris maintained it, there's a very high likelihood it was simply no longer drivable and needed too much work to be roadworthy again. Chris likely got rid of that Sanchu sometime before fall 2011, as according to a leaked email, Chris was driving Barb's Ford Aerostar during the infamous gameplay incident on October of that year. The car was photographed by Google Maps in June 2011, at which time it was still owned by Chris, being at its last public sighting. In September 2013, it was discovered that Son Chu's Sonichu vanity plate had been transferred to a white 1992-1997 Cadillac Seville, which Chris posted several pictures of himself driving since 2012. At the same time, Son Chu was not spotted in the yard of 14 Branchland Court, confirming that it was no longer under the Chandler's possession. The Chandlers did eventually sell the Seville for an unknown amount to another buyer in December 2014. The block damage was repaired and the vehicle was driven for another 2 years and 20,000 miles before being written off in an accident, sustaining significant damage to the front right quarter. After that, it was sent to an auto auction website, Copart, eventually being sold to a scrapper in Richmond for $150 in December of 2016. The vehicle was allegedly still able to move under its own power, though the aftermarket CD player Chris purchased was missing. A blue Ford Focus was the unfortunate chosen one to be the next iteration for Sancho. On the 24th of September 2014, Chris had purchased a used second generation Ford Focus, implying that the Cadillac Seville may have been sold. Chris paid $9,000 for the Focus, paying over $100 a month. This leads one to wonder how Chris was ever able to afford any new cars at all, let 
alone to a room, when he was now subject to begging for donations and or Legos on Facebook, and also Barb's dental operation. In July 2018, Chris recorded My Car's Heating Up Worse, Please Buy From My Ebay and Help, although fans gave him enough money to get it repaired, it merely prolonged the inevitable. In November 2018, the captain reported that the car's engine was permanently broken, and the final iteration of Sun Chu is Barb's Dodge Caravan, which he owned the 2002 Dodge Grand Caravan, which had the license plate B. Weston. She was seen behind the wheel in We Need Money for Mortgage Now, Please, Chris apparently borrowed the car on occasions, possibly for grocery runs. Chris borrowed the car to drive to BronyCon due to Sancho being under repair. While on his way home from the con, the car broke down at the Shetz gas station in Belton, Virginia, prompting Chris to beg online for donations to cover a tow bill and recorded waiting for the tow truck. After the death of Chris's focus in November 2018, the van became the primary vehicle of both Chris and Barb. Most likely this was a result of both Barb driving less as she entered the geriatric stage and Chris opting to spend his tugboat money on more pressing matters instead of obtaining a newer, more reliable car. Chris replaced the Dodge's B. Weston plate with a Sonichu one, cementing it as the fourth iteration of Sonichu. The car with its new plate is visible in the background of a Pokemon Go photo Chris took in April 2019. In August 2019, the day after Chris's 280 mile trip to BronyCon, the car suffered a mechanical issue and Chris stated, after starting the van, I'm whammed in the face with sulfuric odor. Ugh. Sylvan and I confirmed there is now something wrong with the air conditioner, so we'll have to check it out at the local auto repair soon. A sulfuric odor could indeed indicate a broken catalytic converter or fuel pressure sensor. This is likely at the cost of hundreds of dollars to fix slash replace and contributes further to the financial crisis. The following month, Barb took the van in for maintenance on a turn signal bulb and was informed that the exhaust and brake system would need to be replaced, costing around a thousand dollars. And obviously, Chris took to Twitter to beg for the money. On the 28th of March, 2021, denting its trunk door and smashing its rear windshield by backing up into a big rig trailer. He and Barb took it to a body shop to have the trunk door replaced. Chris planned to drive the van to attend the August 2021 Everfree Northwest Convention in Seattle, Washington, which would have been a 41-hour drive crossing mountainous terrain. However, Null vetoed the plan out of safety concerns and arranged a flight instead. However, the incest call completely derailed these plans and the trip was cancelled. Instead, Chris took his car to a hotel in Richmond, where he parked in a spot where he could wait out a few nights before he could return to his home. Chris was arrested on the 1st of August 2021, leaving the car unattended sometime between then and the 3rd of August. A 4 channel stole the vanity license plate of the vehicle. The van was returned to the Chandler's household around or exactly on the 29th of August, this time with Barb's plate put back onto it. And on the 23rd of November, Barb, not having her son to drive her anywhere, experienced a traffic accident with a tractor trailer. The van got t-boned on its left side with the airbag not deployed, resulting in Barb breaking two of her ribs and getting a concussion. The van was totaled and Barb was charged with fail to yield right of way for the incident and a $30 fine and $76 in court costs. The 2014 house fire occurred on the 10th of January 2014 in the early morning hours. A frayed extension cord in the bathroom of 14 Branchland Court, which sparked and set the house fire. Shortly after the fire, leaked emails and Facebook posts from Chris helped set up his version of the timeline of events of that fateful night. What we heard from Chris and what was written in the official fire report obtained months later had some differences. Chris thought that the fire started around 2 a.m. However, the official report states that the 911 call wasn't received until 2.44 a.m. This is in line with what the WVAC, which is a Charlottesville television station, reported as well. Chris's timeline of events stated that at 2 a.m., that was the approximate time the fire began. Between 2 and 2.10, Chris claimed that a fire extinguisher was present or was retrieved and there was an attempt to extinguish the fire which ultimately failed. After the failed attempt to extinguish the fire, Chris evacuated the household along with Barbara and the Chandler 
their pets. Sometime during this period, emergency services were called, and at 2.10, local firefighters arrived at the scene. But in reality, the actual timeline of events state that Chris's 911 call was actually received at 2.44 a.m., and that the fire personnel were on scene about 15 minutes later. WCAV stated that the fire started at around 3 a.m. Almost immediately, the fire department asked for additional support to help fight the fire. The fire was put out by 6 a.m. and the scene was cleared by 7 a.m. Later, an email from Chris is released giving more information about the events. It is revealed that Chris and Barbara were allowed to enter the house and retrieve necessities for living from the house, and were currently receiving accommodation from their insurer while investigations and repairs were conducted. Now there is no official word as to what caused the fire, but cousin Al, the person who leaked several documents related to the fire report, he claimed that it was caused by a spark from an extension cord run through the bathroom door, the plastic coating of which had worn away. Chris was using an extension cord in the bathroom, okay now get this, to plug in a Keurig coffee maker located in the hallway. The cord was looped over the top of the door and the friction caused by the motion of the door had abroaded the cord, starting the fire. Chris claimed that the brewer was off when the fire started, although he did admit that it wasn't unplugged. Why the Chandlers had an extension cord running out of the bathroom to plug in a coffee maker is anyone's guess, but it probably has something to do with Barb's hoarding. It is worth noting that Chris's second video tour of his home, coffee cups are spotted around his bathroom sink, suggesting that the bathroom has become the primary source of water. Said video also shows the blatant fire hazard that was the Chandler home, with piles of paper and plastic inside a barely standing structure of dry wood. I have no comment on the placement of this event. And we've arrived at the end of the video. So yeah, if you enjoyed, maybe consider subscribing. And I don't have much to say, except for massive thank you to everyone on the support of the Iceberg video. And with that said, goodbye.